We are living in unprecedented times. No matter what industry you come from, we must all review, rethink, and reinvent ourselves. Are you an entrepreneur that is trying to adapt your business to the new norm? Well, you are listening to the 2020 Entrepreneur, a podcast that will motivate you and have you think outside of the box. My name is Hugo Almeida, and with over 30 years of being an entrepreneur, I am here to share and inspire you with my experiences and help invent a new you. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to T20E World. Hugo here. I'm excited today because we have a special guest because we're talking about mindset and determination. As soon as I thought of this topic, I reached out to the one and only Vincent Barrigan. Vinny, thank you so much for being on our podcast today and taking the time to visit our studios. This is a topic I've been dying to talk to you about mindset and determination. So how are you doing today, Vin? I'm doing fantastic, and thanks for having me today. No, I appreciate you coming out here. It's so important, and, and there's nobody, I think, better qualified to discuss this with me because Vincent's background is just so broad, you know? We all took the structured steps that we're taught on when we're little, you know, grow up, high school, go to college, try to get scholarships, you get your master's. Vinny did that and then some. Today, you're... The finance director over at J&J, correct? Yes. Awesome. You graduated at NYU. Then you went on to get your master's degree. And what was it? University of? Florida. Florida. Go Gators. All right. Go Gators. <laughs> but what many people don't know about Vinny's early on careers right out of college is that he was part of the ROTC program at NYU. And Vinny, talk to me a little bit. What happened just after that? I mean, I uh, really excited, had a great opportunity to go to NYU, uh, did ROTC. Uh, I did ROTC through Fordham University. That's where they had it, but got a scholarship to go to NYU. That's really how I was able to afford to get there, which is great. I always wanted to go into the military and always really focused on wanting to be like the best that I can be and, and actually challenge myself the most. Sure. And I knew the infantry was where I wanted to do that at you know, earn, you know, a branch uh, assignment to the infantry. And right, was it a couple of weeks after I graduated college, I uh, drove myself down to Fort Benning, Georgia to go to our <laughs> inf infantry officer basic course. Wow, that's crazy. Again, mindset and determination, right? So there's many different types of mindsets. It's fixed, you know, where, you know, we all grown up and we're taught a certain way, right? So we follow those steps. That's a certain type of a fixed mindset. But then there's the growth. Growth mindset is something where we're always setting some sort of a goal, but we're always shooting to improve upon, all right? And that's why I love to put in determination, because when you set your mind to do something, you're determined to reach that goal. So you have a vision, and you're determined to get to that goal. So Vinny, talk to me about what happened. So it's, it's just fascinating, and we've never had the opportunity really to talk about what happened after NYU. So unfortunately, we went to war. And I know that you went off to ranger school, right? And airborne school. So ranger school, talk to me a little bit about that. I know that that's like a brutal, how many weeks is it? 12? More? I, I try not to remember. It's a, it's, <laughs> uh, it, it's a, it's three phases. Yeah. Uh, I think each phase is around two to three weeks. So let's just say about one and a half to two months of uh, training. Wow. And uh, I could only imagine brutal, maybe doing yeah. one word definition. It's hard. Brutal is a tough word. Uh, I mean, if you really think about it, it's Army's way, uh, you know, it's the most premier Army training for infantry officers and, and soldiers. And it's really about preparing leaders to be ready for combat without actually putting them in a combat scenario. So mindset, getting through those brutal days of, of training. Yeah, besides being physically ready, which is very important. It's very important. Um, but the mental aspect. But, but it, it's almost all mental. You think about it, like you're being simulated under combat conditions. So what do they do? You are being put through training, combat operations, patrols, very little sleep, very little food. And really what's got to get you through is besides obviously your ranger buddies to your left and your right all working together. It's really your mental attitude. Like, do you have what it takes and do you want it bad enough? I think it's about half of people don't graduate rangers. And so can you get yourself up? Can you keep yourself focused on like what you need to do at that precise moment and not worry about being hungry, being sleepy, being tired, or wanting to go home, see your family. So. Oh, yeah. And, and you were telling me briefly just before you came on about a good buddy. He was in the school with you in Rangers, and he, he got hurt or something, right? And then they recycle you, and you have to kind of do that whole phase all over again. So talk to me a little bit. What happened? He Yeah, I had a really good friend, and we did our infantry officer basic course together. We were in the same platoon. 
We both went to ranger school. And actually, we both didn't pass a phase. It was the second phase. It was a mountain phase in uh, northern Georgia. And I remember, you know, we were all obviously really upset that we didn't pass. And, you know, obviously, but you knew like, hey, you're going to recycle. You're going to do this all over again. And I just remember him walking away and saying, I can't do it anymore. And yeah. I was just like, no, like, no, like, let's do it. Sure. You can do it. Like, I'm here with yeah. you. And he's like, I can't do it anymore. And I had to kind of let go. And, yeah. But like mentally for me, it was like hard. All right. I, um I got to give another shot, right? I don't want to walk away from this without my ranger tag. Now, what's the process after rangers? You, you did airborne school as well, correct? Yeah, I had done airborne school before. Oh, okay. Uh, which was great because I got it out of the way. I did it when I was a ROTC cadet. Got to ranger school and, you know, a, a little bit tidbit. I had always wanted to go to the 173rd Airborne Brigade, which was based in Italy. Yeah. Um, Vincenzo, right? Yeah. I did not get assigned to that unit right out of uh, college. Okay. So, but I was great. You know, I was going to go to Germany, so I was really excited. But this, I think, we're, we're talking about determination. I had kept asking throughout the entire time that I was in Fort Benning, Georgia, and training, like, is there a slot? Is there a slot? Is there a slot? So what did I do? Like, the next Monday after I graduated ranger school, I went and I asked. I was like, hey, is there a slot to go to the 173rd Airborne Brigade? I was informed, hey, by the way, uh, there's an officer who didn't graduate ranger school. Oh, wow. And they need a new platoon leader. Can you be there in a week? It just happened to work out that way. It just happened to work out that way. But you were determined to be a I'll, part of that 173rd. Yeah, and, and I was like, look, if I don't ask, like, what's the worst thing they're going to say? No. no. And it happened. I walked in. I asked. Someone had just you know, quit ranger school. And, you know, Boom. I was on a plane in three days to wow. Vicenza, Italy. And you know, the rest is history. Wow. So we'll touch upon this really quick. So I'm, I'm just curious. I remember you were based in Vincenzo, Italy. And um, that was where the, the whole Airborne Brigade was, correct? Yes. And from there, you were deployed to Iraq. Yes. We go to war. He gets deployed. What what year was that again? 2003. Yeah, Operation Iraqi Freedom. That's right. And now we need to take over the airport, if I'm not mistaken. And you were on that airplane and deployed to in the evening to just take over the, the runway, correct? Something like that? Yeah, so our, you know, our brigade was tasked to uh, seize an airfield okay. in northern Iraq. Obviously, you know, we wanted to push, you know, from the south to the north. We also wanted to make go from north to south. Originally, there was some thought that we'd be able to go through Turkey and go yeah. over land. That didn't work didn't out. Didn't happen, yeah. So then the only option was to seize an airfield and then bring everything in through that airfield. <sighs> and that's a, that's one of the key responsibilities of an airborne unit. Sure. Is to seize airfields, secure it, and then start bringing in, you know, yeah. further I units, equipment, et cetera. Crazy. I just got to ask you, what was your mind going through as you were approaching the airstrip and you knew any second that door would open and it was time to go yeah so maybe, maybe a little bit of further back we had been trained to do this like i mean if i think about like leadership journey as a cadet even being at, like doing military cadet stuff they're in high school yeah this is something we have been trained for I, I think about it like imagine if you're like a lawyer training to you know try a case and be out there like just like you see in yep. tv and then here you are or you're from the supreme court or here's that big trial that's what we were. So absolutely, um, you know, we were all you know, very scared. And it, it just kind of further framed me. Like, I didn't jump into Iraq. I was responsible for really getting everything loaded. I'd landed on day four. Okay. But again, this is something we were trained for. We knew we had to do. Yeah. And I think that mindset of like, hey, feeling really confident about you, your team, your organization, like, and hey, this is what we're meant to do. I think that's really what helped drive us you know, deploy in, uh, into combat operations. <sighs> Man, I remember, I remember once having a conversation with you. And I'll never forget what you told me was the uh, when that door opens, it's just go. Like you put your head down. You, I think you're touching the front, the guy in front of you, and it's like no choice whether they pause or they don't pause. You're pushing. <laughs> yeah, when you're jumping out of the airplane, and especially as a leader, like yeah. look, there, there's something unnatural about just have a perfectly good aircraft. But you know, when it's your leader or you're just a teammate, like it's not just about you. It's about the person next yeah. to you and. You do your job for, you know, obviously because it's your responsibility. But by the way, you don't do your job well. It could get the person to your lucky right you killed. Yeah. And I think that mentality and mindset is what really allows soldiers. And, you know, I think about, you know, a, a lot of our first responders. Sure. To do what they have to do every day under challenging situations. Wow. Yeah. So so then just kind of fast forwarding. Thank goodness you, you came back <laughs> safely. Thank you. And thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you for your support. And here's a here's another transition, right? And and again, it comes into play the mindset and determination that you had instilled inside you. You come out of the war, you come back to the U.S. Now you want to get on and move forward in your life. So how the heck did you go from you know coming out of war, 
you know, landing in the U.S. and now looking to take it to that other level, meaning you furthered your education after the military, and then you got your feet into corporate America. That's a whole other mindset and determination to move up the ladder of the ranks within corporate America. Take us through that. Like, you come back, and now you got to do some research, figure out what the heck you want to do with yourself. How did it work out? I mean, it, it was a challenging journey. I think it all started with I was in the military. I had just made captain. There was obviously a clear steps of what would go next. Get a lot of support from my command, but I liked the military. I loved the camaraderie, but I couldn't see myself doing this for 20 years. I think it was a different kind of mindset, and sure. I think this is a, the right time for me to make a change. And in my mind, I was like, okay, if I make the wrong choice, I could always try to come back. Yeah. I, th I think there's two things, and I, th I think this is as I think about like how do you prepare yourself for the long term is something that opened a lot of doors was getting into a really good school that had a good reputation. So even though I hadn't done a business course in a number of years, like <laughs> having gone to like NYU to the business school, that gave me a lot of credibility attached with the Army military experience. Sure. But I think that the second piece was like, all right, I, I really want to make sure I'm set up for success. You know, what's the best way? for me to kind of get into and see the right opportunity. So, you know, I did a lot of research and I talked to a lot of uh, officers who knew before me and people who are also doing the same transition. And again, the world has changed a lot for veterans. I'm really happy for that. Sure, yeah, that's veteran awesome. gets out now, like there's MBA there's programs, programs, there's any kind of company. That wasn't, that's not the way things were in 2004. Yeah. Um, you still were really trying to fight hard to try to sell yourself as a product. Like why yeah. you want to hire me, someone who hasn't done that traditional path. But, you know, I found a great recruiting firm that specialized in connecting junior military officers with corporate America. And I just jumped into the research. Sure. I mean, learning about companies, talking to people. I remember talking to you, yeah. talking to yeah. the other peers like, hey, yeah. you know, what are the kinds of roles that I could be looking at and what does that mean? And so that was a big focus for me. And, and that really helped get myself a number of opportunities when I came out of the Army and, and I chose Johnson & Johnson. That's awesome. And I know you've had how many years now with J&J? 16 plus wow. years, 17 years in August. Wow, 17 years. So, and then when, where were you actually? So so what did you do? You relocated to Florida? Yeah. I, so you did your master's while you started your career? Yeah, so I uh, you know, got out of the Army. I was in New Jersey for a couple of months and then got an, an offer to move to Jacksonville, Florida for our vision care business. You know, j, j manufactures the AccuV contact lens. So anyone who wears them, like that's the number one contact oh, lens yeah. in the world. Moved there. So, you know, new state, new cor <laughs> corporation. And I think it was like, okay. Oh, and by the way, kind of a technical role, uh, senior financial analyst. Like I, <laughs> I, I did not have a finance or an accounting degree. So really big focus on, okay, I'm here. I got the job, but now what do I do with it? And how do I learn and, and catch up to my peers as quickly as possible? So here's a whole other role play. Now, determination, right? And the mindset that you need. Now, now all of a sudden, you're in the world of corporate America, you know, and I always talk about the good, the bad, the ugly of corporate, you know, and, and you've managed to just climb up the ladder and, and God bless you, man. You know, finance director at J&J. What unit are you with? I'm with our medical device sector. Okay, uh, cool. So we, uh, we're in the wound closure business. So any kind of surgery, right? You got to yeah. close the wounds. Think about sure. like stitches, yeah, the yeah, technical yeah. term is suture. So we make between 50 to 70% of the world suture. So pretty much majority of surgeries, you know, my business is a part of that. That's awesome. So talk to me a little bit about the challenges you faced. I mean, you want to work your way up the ladder. And listen, there's a lot of our listeners, right, that are just starting into their careers today, right? And there is there's a battle that goes on within corporate. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, there's no there's no set steps, right? You got to work for it. It's a, a complete mindset. You got to set your goals within. Talk to me a little bit about that. And that was a tough transition. The one thing about the military, uh, it's that there is pretty clear paths. I go to infantry basic course. I go to ranger school. I take, I become a platoon leader. Okay, then I go to the captain's course. I become a company commander. It's, it's very regimented, <laughs> which is great because yeah. it's like you really know what you have yeah. to do. You're right. In corporate America, and, and maybe there's different companies. I think they're more centralized. Sure. But I think in general, it's it's very self-managed. Mm -hmm. um, so people who are expecting like their managers or their directors to really tell them like, hey, here's the three things you need to do and check the box. Like that's not the way it goes. And then the one thing that has really helped pretty objective about myself, like what are my strengths? What do I bring to the table? What are things that maybe other people are doing better than me? And I really try to look at my environment. You know, who are those people who are getting promoted quickly? Who are those people who seem to get the attention of management? How do I you know, morph myself mm -hmm. without, you know, to leverage the strengths that those people are, are demonstrating while still being true to myself? And I, and I think that has, you know, once I kind of figured out how to do yeah. that and realized like, how do I really talk about and perform well, then, you know, doors start opening. 
Yeah, it's true. It's true. Listen, you can't sit back at your chair in corporate. No. If you want to work up that ladder, if you have goals, takes complete mindset, definitely takes determination. And and you know what? Resilience to, to a you know a big part of this because you know, we always talk about it in other episodes, you know, how listen, how realistic it is. You know, the good, the bad, the ugliness, right, of corporate America. And 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 there's a lot of people, there's a lot of selfishness within corporate as well, just like in anything you do in life, right? So Talk to us now, uh, Vinny, just out of curiosity. Now, you're, you know, a finance director. So you head up a team of approximately how many people? Yeah, I, I personally have about a 40-person team spread across the globe. And with pandemic and everything, how has that affected the way you go about doing your business? I mean, it must completely be different. Let me, let me try to answer that in two ways. I think this is really came from like the military is like, I've always known that you do not get things accomplished by yourself. Teams right. think, get things accomplished and building that rapport and engagement with your team is vital. I, I had always focused to that, build a high performing team. So when the pandemic came mm -hmm. and I needed to ask my team to do more, right. And more when they're also all challenged around personal life, just like I was, we, we all I, were. Yeah. It really helped like, take us to the next level. If you wait until the pandemic to really start caring about your team as, as people or understanding their personal situations or, or their development plans, it's too late at that yeah. point. Yeah, you're so behind the eight ball already. And so even talk, hearing like other executives speak, it's like those are relationships and having that set up up front is what really has taken like organizations that have done well to really take it to the next level. Wow. Awesome. So Vinny, I wanted to ask you some of the things that you have done personally to just improve upon, meaning you set goals. I know you've always, I've known you many years and you're very, you've always been very disciplined, but give us, you know, you as outside of corporate, some of the goals you always set, you always determined to hit some of them goals, share some of the advice, you know, to some of our listeners, your day to day. I know now you say, we were just talking about it. You got back into the gym. You're trying to get back in shape. I mean, what do you do outside of the corporate America, your mindset and determination, some of the goals that you challenge yourself with? Yeah, I'll give you one example. And I think if you remember, right, uh, I, I did an internship in Congress <laughs> oh, <laughs> when, I was, in, oh, when I was in college. I do remember that. And, and I've always had interest of how do I directly give back to the community. And you know, I've been able That's to, awesome. J&J &J has given me a lot of outlets for that, but I always wanted to kind of take that next step. But let's talk about goals, right? You know, sometimes you're at a different point in your life where maybe mm -hmm. work takes priority or, hey, I'm starting no doubt. a family. But I told myself, hey, this is the year that I wanted to, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> all right, I, I line, you know, line with my, my wife. Life, you know, hey, we're gonna make some time. This is really what's important to me. And you know, this year I was uh, I was nominated by you know by my town council to uh, to serve on our veterans uh, memorial committee. Oh, that's which awesome! Is something I have a lot of passion around, and I think for me is outside the job. Like I really want to kind of be part of something in my community, like directly. And that's something again, something I've had in my mind yeah. probably for a decade. Yeah. And it's not that, oh, hey, you know, I'm procrastinating. It's like, no, maybe it just wasn't the right yeah, time. it wasn't the right time. But this yeah. was the year, right time. I was able to make the right connection and the right opportunity. Oh, good for you. And then I took it. That's awesome. You know, I think, you know, giving back to the community is a huge part. I mean, I, I'm always in the mindset of doing that, right? Anything that we do, including this podcast, you know, this podcast is all about guiding that next set of leaders, you know, all of the Generation Z, the millennials, people are coming, you know, whether they're graduating high school whether they're graduating college, listen, at the end of the day, what is it that we're trying to do and accomplish with this podcast? We're just trying to reduce the amount of time, guys, of you figuring things out. You know, when I was coming up in corporate America, I didn't have all these programs in place. There's a lot of things that we just kind of had to figure out through trial and error. And what we try to do is eliminate all that time that you can possibly lose by the trial and error, all the mistakes, you know? So hopefully you're taking a lot of value, especially having a special guest like, you know, Vin Barrigan with all his experiences, not only in the military, but corporate America, you know? It takes strong mindset. It takes discipline. definitely takes determination to get to what you want to do in life. So Vinny, as we wrap up this podcast, and thanks again, man. This is awesome to have you here. I've been dying to get this topic with you in here. And so... Before we start wrapping up, Vinny, let me ask you this. As we close, if there's a little bit of advice that you can give our listeners, what would that advice be? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Uh, and it's actually, I want to share something that I'm doing for myself, right? Start thinking about ourselves as like a product, right? Think about like the iPhone or something else that like, hey, it just resonates. There's a brand. Think about yourself as a brand, as a company. What are those attributes that you bring to the table? What do you do better than others? You have to learn how to sell yourself. Because when you're interviewing for a role or you're trying to get a promotion, 
Like you want people to buy you, right? So I think that's part one. Think about it that way. The second part, and I think this is something that I've started really doing successfully over the last two years. Think about yourself as a company, and, and every company has a board of directors. So when you're coming out of college or you're in your first role, you might need a certain level of board of directors. Like sometimes, you know, your parents might be your board of directors because they've taken that next step, et cetera. Sure. But as you progress in your career or as you have a different situation, like let's say you, hey, I, I'm thinking about going to grad school or, hey, I think I'm joining that startup. You may need to change those board of directors. And that's okay <laughs> because you're growing and the people who gave you advice, like they may not be able to support you and that's okay. That's so then okay. you have to continue reinventing that. So I, you know, if I had to leave you with any words of wisdom is think about yourself as a product. What are those attributes? What's your brand statement? And make sure you continue having like a really good set of board of directors to help guide you in the direction you want to go. Oh, Vinny, that's great advice. Never thought of it like that. Wow. That's huge. Thank you so much. Vinny, and to all of our listeners out there, thanks again for staying tuned to our episode here at T20E World, where we try to bring you the best. Hope you got a lot out of this one, because I sure did. Vin, thanks again for showing up at our studios and spending some time with us here to talk about mindset and determination. This is Vincent Barrigan and Hugo, and we are checking out.